All right, uh, welcome everyone. Can you hear me now? Awesome, thank you so much. Um, we are really delighted to welcome you to the summer version of the Equity Institute online. Uh, so welcome everyone and thank you so much to all of you for being part of this course. We are uh, really happy to be offering this course again. We have 60 participants enrolled this session and so you're divided into two sections. Uh, one of the sections will be led by me uh, and one by my colleague Patty Violi from the Disability Resource Center. Um, so my name is Melissa Bowles Terry if we haven't met yet. My pronouns are she, her. I'm the director of the Faculty Center and I'm really pleased to welcome you here. We've developed this course to take some concrete steps towards reducing inequities in education. And we know that there's a part that each of us can play in it. We are all part of a university and a higher education system that was not necessarily designed for our current students. And we know that sometimes it doesn't serve them all very well or very equitably. Um, in the past couple of years, we've all seen our students in a whole new light, sometimes with a literal peek into their home lives. And so we know that they're coming to us from a variety of backgrounds with all kinds of challenges that are both visible and invisible. And seeing their full identity, thinking about intersectionality, being cognizant of our language and our privilege and our implicit biases, that's all really important to better serving our students. So we just want to thank you for being willing to examine how you're teaching, how you're designing learning experiences. It's a really good first step. So I'm gonna tell you a bit about our course, uh, which opened up this morning. Um, in the course, you'll learn about UNLV as an institution, our history, and who we serve. That's mod the focus of module one is all about UNLV. Module two is all about our students. And then module three will challenge you to look inside, reflect on your own identities and what you bring to your teaching and learning interactions. And module four has assignments that will ask you to apply everything that you've learned in the past few modules so that you can design better and more inclusive learning experiences. Um, you're part of the third cohort of the Equity Institute Online. And along the way, we've made some revisions and hopefully improvements based on our past cohorts. But we know that there are still going to be gaps and there will be areas that we could improve. And we are really totally open to your feedback and we would love to make improvements as we go because we do plan to offer this again. So please share your thoughts, share your ideas regarding what we've missed and what could be better. We'll ask you at the end more formally for your feedback, but we are definitely open to discussion and feedback along the way as well. So the ultimate goal of this four week course that we're all embarking on together is to offer you some practical ideas to implement more equitable teaching and learning practices. And we know that many of you work in areas outside of the classroom. We have quite a few advisors enrolled this uh, cohort. We have folks from student affairs and, and more. So we know that we're not all in that, um, in that classroom space, but I'm really excited to see how you all adapt this content to your own various contexts where you work with students, whether that's one-on-one -on -one or in co-curricular areas, whatever it may be. Um, but there's just so much to cover and there's so much work to be done when we're discussing equity. And so this course is just going to be one part of that conversation. Please know that we are not going to cover everything, not even close, but we do hope that this will give you a starting point to reframe your teaching and learning activities. And we really hope that you come away with some practical applications. Um, another thing that we really do want to focus on is the learning community that will develop here among each other. Uh, you all have very different areas of ex expertise. You have different levels of comfort talking about diversity and inclusion. And we see that as a strength of this particular learning opportunity. It's kind of exciting that it's happening at this university level. So folks from all different departments and areas are coming together here. And so we hope that you'll be open to sharing and learning from each other along the way. We hope you'll have rich discussions with your group and you'll have the opportunity to give each other feedback on your final assignment, which again is a practical application where you think about what you've learned through the course and how you're going to use it. Um, Patty and I will also have weekly optional office hours where we can extend our discussions in a synchronous space as well. So um, 
the whole court, this is our, this is our kickoff event, but after this, pretty much everything is happening asynchronously within Web Campus. Um, and we can do a little preview and talk about what Web Campus looks like in a moment as well. Um, first, I do want to recognize the course design team um, because this course was definitely a team project that came together with a lot of help from folks in online education, faculty center, libraries, the MSI Student Council, and other campus experts who you will see within the course, including Patty, who did a section for us on um, disability and inclusion and other faculty members, um, Han Fen Hu, Cassandra Rodriguez, Chelsea Heinbach, who all provided their expertise in the course. Um, so now uh, Patty and I will introduce ourselves and tell you a bit about where we're coming from. And then we're also going to introduce our colleagues from online education, Suzanne and Amber, who are here to support us with, um, with course and tech support. So I'll turn it over to Patty. Hey. Um, good afternoon, and, and thank you for being here. I'm really excited to work with you all this month. Um, my name is Dr. Patty Violi, but you can call me Patty. I'm the Associate Director here at the Disability Resource Center on campus, and um, I use she, her, hers pronouns. Um, I'm a military brat that grew up overseas, moved back to the United States, left the United States when I was eight, moved back in 2013. So. Um, I'm American by citizenship, but not by culture. Um, so I think I bring a pretty unique uh, viewpoint to my work and to how we work with students. Um, I received my bachelor's in psychology from the University of Maryland. And then I taught overseas at the Department of Defense schools in South Korea, where I actually graduated from um, for 10 years. Then I returned to Nevada um, actually, I've never lived in Nevada, um, but I came to Las Vegas in 2013, where I worked for the state of Nevada Desert Regional Center, which is the aging and disability services for the state, and um, got my master's degree in special ed here at UNLV. Um, in the midst of getting my master's, I started working in the Disability Resource Center and working with students on the autism spectrum, and also our student veterans because of my background as a military dependent. Um, in the DRC, I've been working on initiatives to create more support for our students and um, looking at how can we improve outcomes, um, the top tier goals of uh, graduation and retention for not just students at UNLV, but students in the DRC. Um, I graduated from Arizona State University in December with my doctorate in my research is looking at improving self-determination skills and goal setting in students with disabilities. But if you look at it as a whole, um, all students coming to our university have deficits in uh, self-determination, self-regulation, and really understanding who they are and goal setting. Um, goal setting is not a skill that is taught in many school districts. And so um, my goal is to get the campus on board and start, let's start talking about uh, giving students the tools and skills they need to progress forward, not just go through emotions and, and get a degree, but how can we make this a more impactful experience for them? And how can we create more equitable experiences on campus in the classroom and outside of the classroom? And I see a lot of see some familiar faces and I see a lot of new faces. So I'm really excited to work with you all. Thank you, Patty. Um, tell you a little bit about myself as a facilitator for this course. Um, I've spent the last 17 years teaching in higher ed and serving students and faculty in different roles. Uh, what I know about equity in education, I've learned mostly from self-study and reading widely on the topic. Um, also from a couple of really good online classes and from a group of faculty developers that I'm lucky to be part of and from my experience in the classroom. Um, my background is I grew up working class and was the first in my family to get a bachelor's degree. And um, so I've often felt disoriented in academia. I'm still sometimes confused about why things work or don't work the way that they do. And um, the old imposter syndrome hits me hard now and then. 
So although I recognize the privileges that whiteness affords me, I feel like my past class status and being first gen gives me a bit of a window into the way some of our students come into the university. And I'm really committed to doing what I can from my corner to create more welcoming experiences and spaces for all of our students. That's what really animates me and gets me excited about working at UNLV is when I see our students succeeding. So commencement is always such a thrill. I love it. It was really great this weekend. Um, Suzanne, do you wanna say hello? Absolutely. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, welcome to, as Melissa noted, our uh, third installment of the Equity Institute. And uh, it is great to see familiar names and faces. Um, I work with the Office of Online Education and um, we just worked very hard uh, to make sure that the content for your course, the access to your course, the ways in which the course was designed, which uh, Amber Ford, our instructional design manager can talk a little bit more about, but uh, just to make sure that everything is in good working order for you, that, um, you know, everything aligned, that uh, assignments are up and running if you encounter issues with course operation or um, have questions about, um, you know, the kind of the workings of assignments uh, within Canvas, feel free to reach out to us during the course, um, during your time in the course. And uh, we're here to just kind of support you in all the best ways that we can make sure everything is up and running and accessible to folks. And um, you know, if you have questions, please let us know. We're here to help you as best as we can and support you in all the ways that we can. We appreciate you so much, Suzanne, and um, couldn't do this without our online ed colleagues. So if you run into any access problems or any um, like content tech issues, uh, Suzanne and Amber are going to be our key folks to fix that up. Um, Amber, do you want to jump in and say hi? Sure. I'm so excited to be here. I can't believe this is our third cohort. That seriously warms my heart. I feel like it was yesterday we just launched this. So this is, we're super excited to have y'all um, in this great program. Um, we had the opportunity to kind of brainstorm and help develop this over time. And it's just great to see what traction it has gotten. And I really hope from the practical standpoint that this course provides you tools and with an experience of what it's like um, to be a student. And of course, I think a lot of folks have found that to be kind of enlightening to be on the other side of instruction and kind of, or to be able to understand the tools that our students kind of use and navigate with um, here. So we're just really overall excited to have you. And I know that this course so far has provided folks some great tools and insight. And I hope for you, it continues to do that. And as Melissa mentioned, we are totally open to feedback. One of the things we pride ourselves on is making um, edits on the fly. If you see something, if you catch something, if you struggle, we are here to help you. And Suzanne has been so great and and getting things up and running and getting folks access and those things. So again, thank you for being here. We're, we're really excited to have you all and we look forward to continuing to support you throughout this course. Thank you so much. Uh, so now you all have met the team that is going to be facilitating your journey here. Um, again, you're divided in two sections. So you're either in my section or in Patty's section. And then um, Amber and Suzanne are gonna help us along the way, fixing things as we go and making sure everyone has great access to the whole course. So um, I'll talk just a little bit about completing the course. We know you're all high achievers. You want to do well, get an A plus, just kidding, it's not graded. <laughs> but um, here's how you can be successful in the class. Each week for four weeks on Monday, we'll open up a new module. And then you work your way through the module asynchronously. Uh, we do want everyone to move through together as much as possible. So um, please try to keep up, but we do understand that things get busy, stuff comes up. So we're going to accept late work through June 16th when the class works up, wraps up. I'll just tell you right now that you will have through June 16th to finish everything. Um, 
but please do note that uh, you have to finish module one before module two will open up for you and then on and on you have to fin finish module two before module three opens um, just so that we know that you've uh, made it through that content um, and the discussions all happen within the module two so it's it's great if you can try and stay on that week to week basis um, I'm going to give you a little look see at the course. So I will share my screen so that you can see. Um, we know that many of you may have already been in, which is great. But if you haven't received an invitation, um, if you haven't been able to get into the course, please do let us know so that we can uh, help you out with that. But let's see, here's the student view. Um, this is what the course looks like. You're going to go through the modules that are listed here. Um, there is a little pre-module, the welcome module, where we would love for you to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. Um, also here, we have listed our um, office hours. This is where you can join us on a weekly basis to extend our discussion. It's optional, um, but if you have stuff you wanna talk about, wanna connect, um, in that synchronous space, please do join us. Um, so module one, as I said, is gonna be all about uh, UNLV's equity mission. You'll learn more about UNLV. Um, everybody who's taken it so far, even folks who've been here for decades have said, oh, I learned something new. So I hope that'll be the case for you as well. Um, then module two, which you'll see is not open yet because as a student, I haven't completed module one, all about the students. Module three, the instructor, um, et cetera. Now there's a badge at the end, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute. But first I actually wanna give you a preview of our final assignment. So um, this is the document that um, you may want to work on throughout the course, but it's what you're going to submit at the end as well, which is a revision of your learning materials for your course. Um, so we'd love for you to open this up in Google Drive, make a copy of it as a, as a template, or you can download it as a Word document. And then as we go through all of the course content, um, you can make yourself some notes about writing a diversity statement. How are you doing on delivering varied content? Have you put these theories into action? We're looking at theories on empathy and trauma-informed pedagogy, culturally responsive pedagogy, funds of knowledge pedagogy. So do you see that coming up? Are you using inclusive language, universal design for learning? And then the course design won't apply to those who are in advising, for example, or student affairs necessarily, um, but consider um, whether or not that applies to you. So that document is there for you right now and you can start making notes right away. Or if you are more of a you know, final module kind of person, you can just work on it in that final module, but it's there for you throughout so that you can uh, note changes you wanna make to your practice as you go. And it looks like a lot, but it's really not. Um, it, it looks like a lot right now, uh, but once you go through the modules, you will, you'll start developing your ideas and realizing what fits with your practice and what doesn't. And um, so don't get overwhelmed looking at all of this. It's, we got you, You're, you'll be, um, it, it'll, it'll all work out. Yes, and you can trust Patty on that because she took the course last time around as I think she mentioned. Um, yeah, and also we're here we're here to answer any questions that you have as you go. Um, so I'll stop sharing there and um, see. So that's your final assignment preview. Also, um, as we mentioned, there's the badge that will be available for you to download at the end. So once you've completed our all four modules, um, there's a badge that you can download, add to your email signature, add to your LinkedIn, um, put it on your CV, anything that you like to demonstrate that you've completed this course, that you have this commitment to uh, educational equity. Um, also, at the end of the course, uh, if you complete all of the assignments, you'll be eligible for a $500 stipend. Um, you can expect that 
in August, but when the course wraps up on June 16th, then we'll be working pretty quickly to finalize our list of folks who completed the course, earned the stipend, and then that will go through payroll. Um, in, and hopefully, fingers crossed, <laughs> get into your paycheck in August. But um, as you may know, getting these things done at UNLV takes a little time, but we're going to do our best on that. Okay, so that's our basic intro, and we're going to open it up for some Q&A now to find out what questions you have, um, what you would like to know as we're getting started in this class. So um, you can put questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself and ask away. I have the chat open too, so Perfect. I monitor. I will just mention that uh, we know as we are adding folks to Canvas, um, we found that many of you um, didn't have an active Canvas account yet, so you maybe haven't used Web Campus before. Um, so don't hesitate to ask us questions about getting started. This course is beautifully designed, thanks to Amber and Suzanne and the team. Um, and I think it's it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you have any issues or concerns or can't figure out how um, different aspects work, please feel free to ask us because we know that for some of you, this may be your first time in Web Campus. It's going to give you so much empathy for our students because you're going to be like, this is what they're dealing with. Um, so enjoy, enjoy that renewed empathy for sure. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm an admissions counselor on campus. So I don't necessarily teach. I looked at some of the materials right now and it says in your teaching practice as faculty, um, am I still qualified to be here or? <laughs> um, I think that this is, this is very valuable, not just for the teaching side, but also for the uh, student affairs, student, any student facing people um, who that, that engage with students on a regular basis. So um, while this was designed for teaching faculty, I think that um, I feel that a lot of the administrative faculty in my cohort that participated, we, we gained a lot out of it and you can tailor it. It may save your teaching practice, just in your mind, in my daily practice. Um, how are you engaging with students? How is your office engaging with students? How are you making uh, is your office accessible to students? Is it an equitable environment? So um, try not to get hung up on that teaching part and, um, and just apply it to what you do every day. Yeah, thanks for that question, Rachel. That's a really good one. And a related question in the chat, it looks like um, from Lay. Uh, Folks who are in advising student affairs, those who work with students more in a one-on-one, -on -one, non-classroom basis, uh, I think universal design is still very useful for you in that kind of practice. Um, you won't need to do the course design part of that final assignment. That part of the template uh, won't apply, but universal design still totally um, useful. Think of it as you have students you may have students, you may have community members calling your office, um, asking for questions. And what is, one thing we looked at is, what is our turnaround time to, for contacting students? Um, sometimes UNLV is, is famous for about a two week wait. And is that, is that really, is that helping us make, like retain students and, and create a positive equitable environment for them? or is there a way that we can cut down that time? I know that in a perfect world, if we had full staffing uh, for all our offices, we could do things like that. Um, but it's looking at what are, we, what are we doing to try to overcome the barriers that we have in our, in our workplace so that students and, uh, and, customer, and people that we engage with don't experience those barriers or can we kind of lower those barriers. 
Right. Right. Alejandria, and also I know Al Hastings, we have notes from you that you don't have an invite for the course yet, so yeah. we will check on that. Actually, Al should now be in the course. Oh, great. Yeah, I just got, Al, you have been added, uh, check your Canvas or your email uh, to see if you've got a notification in there. Perfect, and I'll Angelique. follow up with Alejandria. And Angelique was having issues as well. Awesome. And Sarath, I'll just say my uh, my main constituents are faculty as well, working in the faculty center doing um, professional development. And I think this is definitely, you know, is applicable to to that work as well. If I could just uh, add something to what Patty and Melissa both said, um, as we've gone through, we have tried to and, and made a and even designing the course made a concerted effort to think about how folks can use the content that is in here and while uh, you'll notice in places where we talk about not only folks in the classroom that are working directly with students but so many of us on a daily basis work directly with students and we have an impact on how they you know move through their process in the university and even how they move through the world and I think you know, there's so much in here that is just applicable to how how we communicate with other folks and how it, you know, I, I always think about like, how does this even just show up in my daily life when I'm working with colleagues? And so, um, although some of it is about um, the classroom because we're wanting to offer folks ways to, different ways to engage students, um, as people have mentioned, a lot of those are sort of transferable to thinking about how you might create documents for students or how you might engage in a conversation with students or uh, if you're working directly with students and they're you know behind in uh, paperwork or deadlines or something like that um, but just in general we've learned so much engaging with faculty and staff over the course of these three courses that um, you know we're always trying to incorporate into the modules, different ways that everybody can engage with the content. And so as Melissa noted from the start, we are definitely open to suggestions. We've tried to incorporate a lot, but I definitely, uh, you know, when we were putting this together, we were really trying to think about just how to engage in general. And so while it is about the classroom, uh, there are places that are definitely directed toward just engaging with students in general, so. And just to follow up on that, think of these as these items and these things and these theories that you're learning about as tools in your toolkit. So it just really helps you kind of rethink what you're doing every day and how these things that you're learning apply to how you're working with students, um, even if you're not teaching. And so look at that final assignment as something that is moldable, as Patty had mentioned, how can you use that final piece to kind of identify what you can do different to better support our students and, and utilize it in that way? And I think that really helps us also, also get a good idea of what folks are doing differently on campus based on going through this. Um, which is really amazing to see. So yeah, it's definitely all fluid. Um, but yeah, use use the tools as tools in your toolkit um, for the way that that best suits y'all. And also use this as an opportunity to to network. Um, you're only as strong as as your as your network. And and being able to, um, I know in my office, uh, it's very valuable that I can pick up the phone and call most any office and know at least one person in there. Um, so use this as a network, especially if you're new to UNLV. Um, lean on those of us who have been here a little longer. I know I've, I've been here five and a half years, so I know there's people who've been here longer than me. But um, use the knowledge that people who have been here longer have had, but also those of us who have been here a little longer can learn from those who are coming in new to see what's happening um, in other parts of the country. So um, build that network so that when you do need something or someone needs something from you, you guys can just pick up the phone and say, hey, uh, remember we were in the Equity Institute together and, and start that or just have someone 
now that you can go have coffee with um, if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, Aya has a good question about squeezing two modules in a week. Um, we do have it set just to open on specific dates. So it's not really possible to work ahead, um, only to catch up. <laughs> but um, we've done that to just, again, sort of facilitate those discussions happening, not exactly in real time, but like within um, the week that they're set for. So uh, we can we can make it work, hopefully, um, sort of going back and, and doing stuff. Any other questions from our participants? These have been really good questions, good discussion about what we're doing. Okay, good question about the regular Zoom meetings. So those are our optional office hours. Um, those are scheduled in Zoom. They are on Tuesdays at 11, I think that's right, uh, starting next week. So we have, um, yeah, we have a regular Zoom meeting uh, each Tuesday at 11 that you are welcome to drop into um, to talk about the things you've been reading, viewing, working on. They're not required. Um, it's just an optional office hour conversation. And then at the end of the course um, on the 16th, we are planning, this is still a tentative plan because um, unfortunately the pandemic is still ongoing, but um, June 16th, and of course we are planning to have an in-person gathering in the faculty center. So we'll send out um, details about that as the time gets closer. Uh, so that'll be our like end of course celebration. waiting to see if there are any more questions, but we can we can wrap this up a little early if we've addressed everything that is on your mind for right now. Okay, looks like we are good. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. It's nice to say hello, see some faces. Um, and sort of start to get to know one another, please do get into the course and introduce yourself there. And um, if you're not able to get in, just send us an email right away and we will address those access issues. All right, thank you everyone. And we will see you in Web Campus. Have a great day, stay cool.